Do 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 uh, welcome to the show. Uh, lots going on today as we set the table. Uh, we're going to talk about Queen Dildo and the Hells Angels. Not a group you want to piss off. That'll be a lot of fun. Uh, Linz is back fresh from his trip to Edmonton where, quote, they drink like they're going to the electric chair. Uh, so that'll be fun. We'll talk about that. We'll revisit uh, Ryan Lindley's trip to Edmonton. We've got a bunch of video to show you as well. What it's like to go through a crowd at a Motley Crue show with a little person in tow. That's what he did. And uh, we'll get into that. And of course, Lachlan Cross is back. 957 Cruise FM in Edmonton is where you can find him. That is Lachlan Cross at Lachlan Cross on Twitter. Uh, great to see you. Brought to you by our friends and powered as always by Kivala.ca. If you're looking for a defensive lawyer, good one too. People that will hold your hand, figure it out, get you out of trouble if you're in trouble or get you through something that you need. Uh, Robert tickets. at Kivala.ca. He doesn't do he speeding tickets. Is he doesn't. Awesome. Robert at Kivala. Nope. He told me, he promised me he was going to get things. me out of all... My he literally tickets. does none of those things. Anyway, um, so uh, Robert at Kivlaw.ca or Kivlaw.ca for more information. Um, but <laughs> out of the gate. Yet? No, I don't think so. I, I think he thinks it's funny because he, he knows that like he gets now, he gets people calling him for speeding tickets. Thanks to you. It's I entrapment. Two days ago. It's entrapment, Rob. It's not you got to help me. It no, is. You're speeding. No, it's not. Anyway, um, but, before we do anything, just want to bring in our first guest out of yeah, the gate. In. Radio legend, podcast host, raconteur. Um, I'd say he's the Dilf's Dilf, if you want to be honest. Or the Gilf's Gilf. He's kind and of he's kind of like if you like if you were saying I need a list of the coolest guys in Canada. Yeah, he's on the list. You would put this man on that list for oh, yeah. sure. Fuck. Without question. No question. question. Um, any person that can like wear the, the sleeveless anything into their middle age is oh, yeah. a hero of mine. Rockstar. I've worked with him. I trust him. I like him. Uh, he's intelligent. He's smart. He's interesting. He's self-aware. He is open-minded. And he's the host of a couple of podcasts called Records and Rockstars. Mm -hmm. may have heard of it. It's one of Canada's yeah. biggest rock and roll interview radio programs. That's on a podcast form. He's also the host of something called Bedtime Stories on OnlyFans, which you can subscribe to. Erotic Tales written by this man uh, to put you to sleep or to give you a boner. And the other thing that he's launching, which we're going to talk about today, which I'm very excited for, is his new podcast, new brand called Blue Hotel. Ladies and gentlemen, Gives me great pleasure to bring back, as you pointed out, the coolest guy in Canada, Mr. Jeff Woods, ladies and gentlemen. There he is. Mm, How do you like lot. that? How do you that's like that? Lot. That's a lot to live up to. Well, dude, I hold Thank you in high esteem. You're very kind. Let me only make a correction on one thing because yeah. uh, who, who knew? I killed the OnlyFans page only because what? it was a good testing ground. To uh, to see how it resonated, the telling dirty stories to people, well, and uh, and it resonated well. well. And then I put it on. It's it's in the archives, and I'll bring it out. Is one of the features in the new podcast, Blue Hotel. Mm, Blue Hotel, Jeff Woods, so, ladies and gentlemen. He's a thirty year broadcast mm. veteran. Worked with him for many years. One of the nicest human beings, as I said, very cool. As you can see, he's got cool glasses, cool shirt, cool hat, cool tattoos. He's just fucking cool. Uh, the new <laughs> podcast is called Blue Hotel. Uh, let's get into that real quick. Let's talk about it, and then we'll let Lachlan uh, let loose, yeah. and then we'll get into the business. But what is Blue well, no, Hotel? No, I, oh, yeah, sorry, that's, that was going to be the, the the question. Is it is it some naughty shit? Uh, it certainly is. I figure a, a week, uh, a weekly thing, an hour a week, whereby I introduce a theme. You know, my radio shows have always been theme based, so the theme might be sixty nine, <laughs> and. And uh, I'll introduce that theme, for example, and, uh, and and then introduce a guest that can speak to that, uh, a weekly guest, and then open up the Blue Hotel hotline, which is actually open right now and already taking calls. Um, listeners sharing 
um, and asking questions. I'm no registered psychologist. However, I've got a little bit of life experience. So people tend to ask me about marriage, relationships, sex, mm -hmm. right? But but more than that, I think it's going to be stories that people uh, present by leaving a voicemail up to two minutes long. And I'll play them back, the Blue Hotel hotline. And mm -hmm. then we'll wrap each uh, episode with one of the, as you alluded to, one of the bedtime stories, fiction, which mm -hmm. is mostly based on, you know, someone's real life. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and it's really <laughs> yeah. LGBTQ uh, friendly in that uh, everybody everybody's in the room. Mm -hmm. I'm not excluding yep. anyone. Yeah, you called it, uh, uh, what did you call it? Sexual adventures for the open-minded. <laughs> Largely, uh, in, yeah. In the trailer, right? Is it, what, what was the impetus for this? Was it the horny bedtime stories you're telling? You're like, fuck, I'm so hot right now. I need to, I need to parlay this into a longer feature. <laughs> You know, it really goes back to what David Bowie said, and, and people have heard him say this many times in interviews, and he certainly told me this in 2002 when I first chatted with him, and it was simply that it's something he subscribed to his entire career, as you might imagine, because he was always changing, going deeper, going weirder, going... He, he, in the early 80s, he went more commercial, doing an R&B record with Nile Rodgers. It became his biggest commercial success in Let's Dance. So it wasn't just about getting weird and going offside and being alternative. It was about change. And, and here's the quote, effectively, that he said and, and that I've, you know, has inspired me to do Blue Hotel. It was, you know, you have to feel like your feet aren't touching. You have to feel like you don't mm. quite know what you're doing. You have to get a little uncomfortable. Mm. If you keep doing the same thing the same way for too long, you might lose your your mojo and your and your inspiration and and really your interest in doing something. So I thought let's go down a road that I need to know more about. So I'm educating myself and I'm diving into the deep end where my feet don't touch and uh, I'll continue to do my music radio and my interviews with rock bands, but this is something different, something mm -hmm. to sink my teeth into for the, let's face it, I'm, I'm in my 50s, late 50s. I want to spend the next 10, 15, 20 years going out with a bit of a bang, and this is it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true though it's so true has this this i don't even feel like i can't even look at you in the eyes right now You're so i can i okay, can go ahead it's go the ahead. shiny longingly. glasses yeah longingly. <laughs> this fucking guy i love him I do, he's like if there was a jeff woods church <laughs> i'd be there every sunday with a new pair of pants <laughs> yeah me too I was gifted with a with a with a, a strong libido. So so now I have like what a normal person has for a libido yeah. when they're twenty eight. But uh -huh. you know, it was always like I, I was nineteen forever. Yeah. And, and oh, you were. Go, I worked with you. I've watched. Why you are you operate. such a Why are you such yeah. a horny prick? It's, well, it's, and, and that's let, let's listen. Let's get into your horniness just for a second, if we can. Um, you're, so you're going to give marriage advice, correct? I'm going to give a life experience that can be taken however people want to take it. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so you would be good at that. How many times have you been married? And then I'll compare mine to yours. No, um, no. Is four a lot? Yeah, no, that's good. So you <laughs> once, have lots of experience. Dean, once I was worried that it was a lot. And uh, so I went Hollywood divorces. It yeah. started at four. <laughs> okay. If yeah. you didn't have four, you weren't even on the list. <laughs> once I think again. it went up to like 12. <laughs> Just the check mark that says he's the coolest guy on the planet. Um, yeah, so you've been married a couple times, but you've always had this high libido. Like, I remember you, you and I would go on boat cruises. We would go do, like, uh, functions. We would go across the street and walk together. And every time you'd walk somewhere with Woodsy, every woman would look at him and go, who's that? Oh, every single woman and guys. And it's just, it's this vibe that he gives off. Like what he's doing here is just him. He's just who he is. Um, yeah. But when you're in traditional media, you're not allowed to explore that part of yourself. Like that's, that's kind of the, one of the cool things about you having the space to be able to do this, by the way, part of the sound off media network, uh, you can get Jeff Woods uh, records and rock stars too. anywhere you get your fine podcasts. I suggest you go subscribe to that. Also blue hotel, which you can go subscribe to watch the trailer uh, anywhere you get your fine podcast. You can get it at Dean as well. But, 
like this is only possible that you know the duplicity of a radio guy trust me i know what i'm talking about i'm the same cat where you can take the passions you can take the things that you love you're a big fan of erotic art you've got a high libido uh you've been very open with your sexuality and who you are and what you're all about and it's almost like technology and time is now on your side where you can say not only am i going to follow this passion down the road and i'm going to go out with a bang but i'm gonna i'm gonna turn this into part of my brand part of who i am and it's fucking awesome to watch it really is (laughs) it's it's an opportunity I, i feel like it's all a gift to us to have the technology to have the ability to have the audience the audience was always there but where were they getting this stuff particularly when it's uh, considered illicit and explicit. Um, we couldn't do it on commercial radio. We could barely do it on most television. We got that kind of content in uh, in blue movies. Blue has that connotation, doesn't it? So it kind of worked with the title. Um, but now in the podcast world, we can do what we want. And if you go to any of my episodes of interviews or music or now the blue hotel they're all marked with an e for explicit even if there's one f-bomb in an interview that i say to the artists you know uh, i'm not challenging you to to try to swear a lot but if you if you let one out don't be upset about it we're adults it's an adult podcast it's an adult world we're not playing this for our four-year-olds in the back seat so we're big kids now we can talk about that stuff can't we Mm-hmm. I, I think that's that's the challenging conversation right now in the world that we live in, in the overly woke world, because I, I keep having this conversation with people about, yeah, is there more scrutiny on certain aspects of, of content? Yeah, yes, but th- there isn't. I, I get away with way more now than I did. 10, 15 years ago on the radio. It's just, it's different, right? We, our culture shifts. And I think we're at a point where a a program like Blue Hotel might be way more accessible and and considered passable today than it would have been 10, 15, 20 years ago. Yet there are topics that people don't want to wade into today right it's just culture shifts so i think it's it, it's interesting that dean did point that out that this you're sort of what you've morphed into jeff from your radio career into this podcaster um is is interesting in it and and time is on your side even though you are on the back end of 50. <laughs> it's true <laughs> i i think that when you talk about things being more allowable. Here's what I think is more allowable. Um, um, Content that's not uh, unduly Mm mean-spirited. I mean, listen, I I mentioned Bowie, and I do a lot because he was the most intelligent rock star that we've ever known. He talked about meeting John Lennon for the first time back in like 1974. And he described him as having this, you know, English spiteful humor, which he adored because, you know, he's English too, and it's it, it's intense. But but more than that, he called him uh, a great uh, man of compassion, a socialist. And he goes, and I don't mean socialist. The socialists have been co-opted by uh, political uh, people who discuss politics on Twitter. Not that kind of socialist. A socialist as in a compassionate, empathetic person, a decent human, a human that wants good for all the other humans. That's really the old school version of socialism. So what is allowed is pretty much anything. What isn't allowed in my world is shitting on people um unduly um and, and oh, i thought you, know you meant literally <laughs> oh, literally <laughs> that's that's a whole other world isn't it but yes you will you the... be getting into a scat no series, that's, that's that's probably the only place i'm not gonna go i like a nice golden shower though who doesn't you're in the shower with your girl <laughs> and and she pisses on your leg i love that it's warm you really kind of sexy yeah, it's no, like I, squirting I just, only it's urine. I'm okay yeah. with that. <laughs> what, what, why why don't you like that? How do you not like? Uh, that? Well, there, there's sort of I don't know. Two things. It's it's like if, for me, 
I don't I'm, need to be peed I'm, on. Uh, I'm not. I'm not as. Uh, I'm not. How do you say it? I'm not as, uh, as free wheeling as you. I'm not as like uh, adventurous yeah. as you. And so it's. It hasn't. The golden showers isn't something that I look at and I go, hmm. That's something. It just has never turned me on. I've always looked at it like a function, right? So <laughs> and for me, I don't look at those things like like same same way like uh, you know if if uh, I had a significant other and they were in the kitchen and they were chopping up some some onions to uh, make a stir fry. I don't have an onion fetish. I don't have like a pea <laughs> fetish. I just, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that turn people on. And and yeah. I don't, but here's the thing. The difference between me 10 years ago and me now, I would have chased this down and asked what was wrong with you. Now I don't. Now I just go, hey, fuck, let it bake. This these There are people that are into the whiz and it's totally okay to be into the whiz. There are people that are into the scat. John McAfee would be one of them. The stories that have come out about his poop hammock are legendary. And, and you know, he was a terrible person and all those things, murdered a guy down in in uh, Bolivia or wherever the fuck he was. But to your point, no one's hurting anybody in that engagement, whether or not you like it, whether or not you approve of it, yeah. doesn't matter, which lends itself to what you're talking about, right? Which is like, hey, listen, if there's a way to do golden showers, it's a little hotter than most. I want to listen to that podcast because it's wow. it's new to me. It's foreign to me. But there are going to be people like me listening to Blue Hotel. And then there are going to be other people who are into the into the business like you're into the business who are like, yeah, this is a great open conversation about something that uh, has been looked at like a like a pejorative for a long period of time, which it is not right. It is two consenting adults deciding to play that what how and how that defines is up to you. And truly, that's key. And that'll be certainly one of the themes uh, in this Blue Hotel podcast. Uh, consent, what it means, um, where it goes wrong, why it goes wrong. Uh, no means no now. And even if, even if it turns into yes and then no, the no is the no is the no, right? So, so you know, there's a lot of men that have gotten into a lot of trouble by not understanding that. And we're going to dig into that in probably multiple episodes of this thing. Well, it's about health, right? It's about, yeah. it's about good sexual health, understanding, education. But at the end of the day, pleasure, if you're doing it right. Mm-hmm. Well, and that's, that's so. Hold that, on, that I'm question. stuck on the pee thing. I, I, I'm sorry, we're not, <laughs> we're not going to be able to shake. So, is this just a shower thing for you? Because I, I would be concerned about the cleanup, right? Like, her, has a woman ever like thrown you down on the bed and dropped trowel and go, no. "All right, we're going to urinate on your Fender shirt right now here, Jeff, Jeffy"? No, that that's yeah. more of it, and that's not even a. Fo that's more like uh, you're in the shower and and, and uh, do you pee in the shower? I know I do once I in a while. If I have to go, it. I'm not going to yeah. what dry off and then go to the toilet and then go back go in the shower. It's just. It's it's Pointless. a bathtub. It goes yeah. down the drain. Same place the other. Um, yep. No, if if you're having a shower with a girl and uh, she lets a little pee fly, it's kind of funny. It's a surprise. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, cool. Yeah, I like that. I like I like liquid coming out of your vagina, the squirting. I mean, yeah. that's that's the ultimate. It's the ultimate me. compliment, isn't it, for a guy? Isn't that the ultimate compliment? That's like well, I you like, know, you know uh, when yeah. you've hit pay dirt. Right. I love when a girl is that uh, open and uh, able to uh, release in that way. It's mm -hmm. great for her. And it is, if not a compliment, certainly a pleasure for a man to be a part of that experience. Or, yeah, I, I know for me, I, I would just stand there and go, I did that. <laughs> yeah, that would be. You it. didn't. I did that. <laughs> I'd be going to get a towel. I mean, I'd like. Well, there's always like, the put, put two put two towels down so that you yeah. can sleep after without having to change the sheets. Yeah. Oh, he's got it all figured out. Do you have a wow. bed saver? Do you have a, a, a mattress saver that you? Uh, you have wearing? to have that. I've had that yeah. for years. Have really? you really? Yeah. You've had the mattress saver for years? I didn't know that. That's a thing, right? Oh, That's a thing that yeah. you do with your kids. But when you're an adult who likes to engage in different activities, mattress saver comes in handy, as I understand. It. <laughs> yeah. So that when you move in two years to your new house, people, yeah. the movers aren't like, what the hell happened yeah. in here? <laughs> <laughs> Every color in the rainbow. <laughs> what are you doing? I always love like on garbage amnesty day driving past people's houses when they put out those stained mattresses where you're like, dude, a mattress saver. Hello, dude. Hello. 
That's all you needed was yeah. a mattress saver. Um, so the tinkling is something that's good. But what ha- has have you ever been in the shower where someone's accidentally uh, tinkled and you're like, that's hot, but then pushed too hard and maybe drew mud? Uh, not no, so hot? No, no. There's not a world I want to be in, and I've okay. never seen I'm that just happen. Checking. No. Okay. No. You know, remember the Shulman files? You have to be of a certain age and from Toronto. Back in the early 80s, Morty Shulman did a television show called The Shulman Files, and he would have guests on, and they would talk about things like sex. Uh, but they wanted to be anonymous, so they wore like feathery masks, funny masks, and then they would say whatever they had to say. And, and I would distinctly remember being about 16 uh, and watching the Shulman Files and watching women and men talk about scat, uh, shit play. <laughs> and, and, and I was like, I don't think I'll ever be into that. And I, and I can confirm that, that that's still You're true not. to this day. Oh, yeah, good, I, good, Jeff. I, I'll, uh... I just... I'll stand in line see. with you on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same with me. Far it might be the only. Th- I mean that that and bestiality. Forget about it. What are the um? Is part of this like you talking about all of these things? Talking about you know uh, eroticism, uh, you know pleasure seeking, all that stuff. Um, has this been beneficial to your mental health? That's a quick question before we get on to some other stuff. As as because because this to me is like. You know, I've known you for a long time, and I've got a world of respect for you in all capacities, professionally, personally, Thank as a you. friend, as a man, as an individual that takes care of his business. You won't find better than my man Jeff Woods at Jeff Woods Radio on Twitter, by the way. Give him a follow. Again, Rec- Rock- Records and Rockstars, his podcast. Go subscribe. Same thing with Blue Hotel. Go subscribe before he launches his first episode, I think, at the end and of the month, 22nd. Thank correct? you. 23rd, first day of fall, 23rd, 23rd. Okay, yeah. episode no, number one. With I Laura little... Desiree from Naked yeah. News. Oh. She's a wonderful woman from Toronto, now in Brooklyn, New York. She's a performer and a podcaster herself was one of the hosts on the Naked News. Just a sweet individual. Her dad came from radio, as a matter of fact. Okay. Um, she helped she sort of inspired me to to to, to push this into into reality and do mm-hmm. the Blue Hotel podcast. Well, like, Instagram and has uh, has an account too, Dean. It's called Blue Hotel Podcast. Blue on Hotel Instagram. on Instagram. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a storyboard. It's all the pictures kind of make sense when you when you start hearing the episodes. Tell me what you were thinking, though. Well, I, I wanted to ask you because, like, you know, as men, you know, we're, we walk around and we don't talk about our proclivities. Uh, you know, we hide certain things. This is like, you know, you're in your 50s. You're about to dump it all out, right? Like this this part of your life that, and you've been really open and honest about your entire life, the entire time I've known you, but you're also a very private person. So, you know, the culmination of these things, these two things coming together, mentally speaking, or when it comes to, you know, the holistic practice of you being the best version of you, is this an extension of that? Well, it is. I, I believe that uh, a couple of the things that really hinder our ability to uh, be uh, healthy mentally are things like shame. I've made tons of mistakes in my life as it relates to relationships. I was so good at the career, less so at a personal relationship. Um, and, and, and while I regret that, I can't change that. I don't carry shame anymore. Know better, do better, be better. So this is largely for the people who are listening. It's not going to be about me, but I bring my context into it for the purpose of uh, making things make sense mm-hmm. and, uh, and and shedding a little light on how I did it and how I do it. And and but it's going to be entertainment based with uh, with with really a a view to helping people out, helping people understand, helping people learn, helping people feel better about themselves Mm -hmm. and helping people find more pleasure in their sex life. Mm. I think too, that able to talk about it too, right? The talk is good. And and having, having a two way discussion with the blue hotel hotline, I think it'll be great. Uh, One of the things that I heard that really sort of hit home with me with respect to the pandemic and, and the lockdown and, and all the, the craziness that we went through uh, and and again, I can't take credit for it. Somebody said it out loud and I was just like, that, that makes sense. It's okay to not be okay. Right. And I think that sort of plays into the theme you're talking about, Jeff, is that, you know what, you, you have to be able to wrap your head around the idea that, you know what, you're going to fuck up, that you're probably going to make mistakes. It's how you deal with it. It's how you digest the aftermath of that shit and being self-aware too is something that I think um, that I've, I've kind of worked on and being aware of my part in a situation is, is integral. 
Absolutely. Yeah, that's good. Continue. That's good. Yeah. What's your role in this thing that went yeah. really well and conversely went really wrong? I don't know. Actually, every day is a struggle in some way for all of us, but uh, but but education and, and the best knowledge is self knowledge. To your point, right? Yeah. Mm, yeah. 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 No yeah. Investing in no yourself. Yeah. You're right. And you guys yeah. are both all about that. It's the only. Well, hopefully, as we get older, we become more of that. We don't know it all. The, the the you know the I, I don't know how you express this uh, traditionally and uh, as a scholar, but the more that you know, um, the more you realize, the less you know. You know what I mean? You, you're oh, yeah. more aware that there's way more to learn. Yeah. It's not like you suddenly are getting to the precipice of knowing it all. Yeah, there's so much. There's so much more. And when you yeah. think you've stopped learning, you're done. You're dead. Yeah. And, and, and you know what, and that's the incredible part of life, right, is that these experiences that we go through, whether you consider them failures, whether you consider them successes, we only really learn from things that go wrong. We only get <laughs> yeah. better when things go wrong because we have to get introspective, respectful, and we got to look at ourselves and our, our own job in, that's in part our situation, of the team, all everybody around That's us, part right? of it, yeah. being aware yeah. of when things are going well and, mm -hmm. and going, okay, well, this is, this is why this is. Mm -hmm. You know that this is why things are are, are going well right now. And, and yeah, no, and, but but and, there's so many of us, dude, that that like legitimately hide these like things in ourselves or these proclivities or these uh, these interests, whether it be a sexual interest, whether it be uh, maybe you're a hair guy uh, and you don't want your friends to know you love hair. I mean, it doesn't even matter what it is. It's just that like men specifically, which is why I wanted to talk to Jeff about this, is that, you know, he's putting it all out there. He's saying, hey, this is this is what I'm interested in. This is who I am. This is what I've always been. Uh, yeah. And I want to be this person for the next, you know, 15 to 20 years. And I want to make this my job. I want to educate. I want to entertain. I want to inform people. But, you know, it's it's a tough road for a lot of different people. It doesn't even really matter like uh, what the content is or what the subject matter is. Um, what matters is, is that, that this is a tough, like the courage it takes a guy like Jeff or anybody to step out and go, ah, you know what? Everything that, that I've had to kind of secretly know about myself for no reason at all, other than perception, I'm going to embrace all that. That's what I get out of this is the courage and the strength to be able to do it, Jeffy. Yeah. Well, that's part of it. I mean, yeah, I mean, you're alluding to uh, the obvious uh, to many people, LGBTQ, uh, LG, LGBTQ. Um, uh, I've been by my whole life, but I didn't realize it until I was in my early 30s. And people were like, wow. Uh, people that are homophobic are like, wow, as long as he doesn't, what's the classic line? As long as he doesn't touch me. Right. Yeah. They, we've heard that since we're like, what, nine years old. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there's a pretty good chance that someone who's gay or bi wants no part of you, if that's your attitude. I mean, it's it's such a different vibe uh, that someone like that is, is you know, reverberating on. We're, I, I'm inclusive and and I'm I'm there to uh, some shed some light on how I came out, what it meant, um, and the fact that there's many definitions to these things. Bisexuality doesn't mean that you're equally attracted to men and to women. It's not a fifty-fifty thing. It's different for absolutely everyone. In my case, guys, a um, hundred. Let, let me just doing math here. It's just hypothetical. A hundred women walk by me. And I'm attracted, uh, arguably, to, let's say, 50% of them. A hundred guys walk by me, and I'm attracted to about 3% of them. It's, it's a part of your sexuality. It's a part of your proclivity. But it's different for absolutely everyone. Mm -hmm. I'm just a really open person, and I'm not afraid of my feelings. I believe, and, and I'll kind of close it this way, making a strong point is this. I believe every man, including every man who's watched porn, which is pretty much every man. Uh, <laughs> there was I a comedian, research it. I don't watch it. I right? It's just it. research. I realize <laughs> yeah. there's 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 a comedian who said, "So uh, tell me, guys, do you watch porn?" And they're like, "Yeah." And and do you like when? Do you like when uh, the women have really great breasts and their and beautiful hair and they're just sexy and young and vivacious and, and and they're yeah and do you like when the guy has a really small dick and he's limp and he can't get it up? They're like no. Oh, you like when he has a really great dick and it's hard and he's pounding her and it's great to and they're like, well yeah. Oh, so maybe you. 
Maybe you've thought about that a little more deeply than you've been willing to admit. Every guy, every guy's thought about doing stuff with other guys. Most guys had their little thing, that one-off thing that either scared the shit out of them and made them never talk about it again, or they legitimately weren't into it, or they legitimately didn't have one of those experiences. But there's a lot of people, and I, and I know this, because I've been on some of the sites, one of them would be Grinder, and probably one of the most um, prevalent things on Grinder is the word discreet. Now it's a dating app, right? And you can have a picture, but the discreet guys that are straight appearing but want to get their cock sucked or suck cock, yeah. they identify with no photo, <laughs> no name, and they use the word discreet. Oh, is that the game? Is that That's the game? The game, right? Yeah. So you know, there, there's a but there's a huge proportion of these men that yeah. are afraid that somebody might find them out. So there's still a ton of shame. A mm -hmm. massive yeah. amount of shame out there. Or at they every might be age. married. Yeah. Well, that's part of it too. <laughs> that's part of it too. Um, yeah. But there's a lot of guys out there of all ages. It's not just guys over 60 years old from the old school or from the old generation. There's yeah. lots of young people in their 20s and 30s that are deathly afraid Still. of people finding out. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah. I want to make that, it better for those that's people. That's part of the podcast. Mm. That's unfortunate. Cool. And, 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 and I say that because... Um, we may or may not have somebody um, that is a very at, at at one of the higher levels of the political spectrum in this country that may be having a similar struggle. Let's just say that, that the rumors are out there. And I've said this out loud. Dean and I have had this conversation multiple times. You would think we were at a time when it would be okay for that, that gentleman to just come out and go, okay, I'm married, but my security guard on Saturday nights drives me to my boyfriend's house in the suburbs, <laughs> right? Where I perform acts of homosexuality. And that guy would probably do okay at the ballot the next time an election came around, yet is still hiding that or potentially maybe hiding that from all of Canada. And, and I, and it, to, at one, on one point, right. I don't necessarily like this man uh, because of his politics, but you feel bad for that guy that he has to live his life. People. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. presenting this. And the funny thing is, is you can see right through it. Most people are aware that he is playing a version of himself that he thinks is palatable for 50% or more of the population. And unfortunately, he might be right because when I have that conversation and you say things like that out loud, you go, oh, for fuck's sakes, you know what? We're not there yet. We still aren't there yet. He might be right. He might be making the right decision because of where we're, where we are culturally right now. And it, and it's, it's fucking sad. It is so it is. fucking sad that people still can't be themselves yeah. in this day and age. It is 2022. No and I, who cares? I don't care if you like cock, that's fucking fine. What does that have anything to do with me? Like it just doesn't matter. It does not matter to me. But we—it's somehow... the same argument as the pronouns too. It's the same argument. Like why do why do you care what someone wants to be called? Why are you using this as a yeah. fight? Why are you deciding to insert yourself or your fucking uh, you know po down opinion into someone else's life as they want to live it? Right. Thank same thing. You. It's yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, the he, she, they thing. I mean, if someone wants to be identified as they because they don't really feel comfortable with the she, and they don't really feel comfortable with the he. What's what of what harm is it to you and I that they want to be known as they? Of what go. difficulty is it? A, we might forget, but when corrected, we have to be respectful enough to go. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I'll I'll, I'll do better because you told. And who me. fucking cares? And who yeah. fucking cares? Right. Yeah. If you want to be uh, a toaster you know. for fuck's sake, <laughs> no, right? Like no, right. it's it's like it's like you telling me, Locke, that you're into blondes, and me going, can we talk about this? Because like that preference is not cool. 
that you're into blondes, right? <laughs> yeah. To me, it's the it, exact same thing. It's no different. No, nothing. That's your preference. Well, there's um, a Jeff lot of would... fear. There's a lot of fear out there. And, and most yeah. of these uh, uh, inabilities to uh, be understanding, compassionate, and, and, and the resistance has to do with fear. Fear mm -hmm. that somehow it has going to affect your life negatively, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's pretty sad. I have a, I have a mantra. I, I say it when I, every, every time I do yoga I'm and, wasted. and, and it's a, uh, what's that? I'm wasted. Is that the mantra? No, <laughs> usually not drunk when I do yoga. Usually not. I don't know. Anyway. Um, I and it's, it's about judgment and I'm, I'm, and I'm not good at it. I, 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 I still catch myself quite often judging people, but I truly believe this. And, um, I've said this out loud countless times. I, I think if we can get rid of the judgment piece in the world that we live in, I think we could just about fix every problem on the planet. And people go, yeah, but what about climate change or, or nuclear proliferation? Fusion? I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Fuck, it's the judgment thing. It's yeah. the, it, it is the essence of every problem that we have on the planet. It's, it starts and ends with judgment. It just does. Yeah, but devil's advocate. Yeah, I, ag I agree. I agree. But devil's advocate would say, "Well, you know, you judged Don Jr. this morning for his stupid ass tweet about uh, any woman in the military." Blah blah. He's just he just everything that comes out of that young man's uh, mouth is is typically garbage. That is my judgment based on yeah. the stuff that comes out of his mouth. There's no empathy yeah, there. But he's There's a no fucking idiot. Decency. Yeah. Well, but these are judgments, but yeah, there, there's a baseline of, of, of human decency that we've, yeah, yeah we've agreed to rise above. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Yeah. Um, Jeff Woods yeah. is our guest. Again, uh, records I'm not and, good at it, but. No, no, me neither. I don't think anybody is, especially when you're paid to do it. Uh, but at Jeff Woods <laughs> Records and Rockstars, name of the podcast, download, subscribe. Same thing with his new podcast called Blue Hotel. It's on Thank Instagram. You. you can check out the storyboards as well. Give him a follow at Jeff Woods Radio on Twitter, uh, Blue Hotel, uh, and Records and Rockstars. Uh, pump that in anywhere. Give him a follow everywhere, specifically his podcast. Um, I want to ask you, because you came from radio, I came from radio. We just watched, uh, you, you know, the station that you used to manage, Q107, uh, you know, sister station in the place that I worked at for a long period of time. Uh, Lose a Heritage Morning Show. Derringer was put out a big ker kerfuffle over, um, you know, how he was, uh, which has come out and uh, played out in the news. Everybody's got their own narrative. I wanted to get your thoughts on it because, uh, you know, him intimately, uh, you know, the players, uh, you know, the business. And uh, as this industry continues to show us what it's all about, um, you know, there's there's a history there with radio of people, as you know, uh, that uh, radio didn't treat human beings very well as an industry for a long period of time. Um, but I wanted to get your thoughts. What you make of the uh, of everything? I mean, not just the firing, not just the, the reset, but what what uh, what the culture of that business is all about and uh, what that said to you. Well, Dean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad you asked, because I, I think that. As radio people, we've always thought that radio is extremely um, unique. And yes, you're unique, just like everyone else. There's a lot of <laughs> sectors that have faced the same sorts of challenges. There's, there's a corporate buzzword. What's the challenge? What's the problem? <laughs> and the problem is how we treat each other in the workplace sometimes. When you add uh, the environment of entertainment and the environment of having to have decent ratings to keep your job, well, all employees are rated in some way, so there's pressure on everyone to do a great job. In the entertainment world, it gets even more fiery because you're behind a microphone or on a camera or both trying to be a performer and an entertainer. Things can go incredibly well. Things can go less well. There's multiple people in the room. When the mics go off, sometimes the shit hits the fan, TV and radio. Uh, or probably air traffic control. I mean, we're not that unique. There's a million different examples of how things can be difficult among the people in the room. Probably stock traders have the same thing going. Um, so how do I how do I make sense of that? Things. The Me Too movement, for example, that's more about sexual abuse, and nothing of, of that nature was going on in the case we speak of with the Q107 radio station and John, but it was more about verbal uh, abuse allegations, right? And we've all been in scenarios where we've said something or been on the receiving end of something that wasn't real kind and probably not really appropriate to have said 
or to have set at you <laughs> in a workplace. Not Things are money. getting better because there's more, there's more, there's more accountability. There are more rules and these aren't bad rules. Somebody shouldn't call you a, an effing A because they wanted to and didn't like what you did on the radio or, or, or in the hallway. Um, there's channels for that. It was called human resources. Long story short, things went down over the years, starting in the late nineties. When I was a member of that radio station, um, amidst a bunch of radio announcers, male and female, there were things said that probably shouldn't have been said. Things didn't get checked. Things were allowed that shouldn't have been allowed. Over time, the people that were hurt by it and are no longer working there and tended to be female woke up one morning and went, fuck. I, I'm still hurt by this thing. I went to therapy for it. I changed my job for it. I'm, it may have affected my relationship negatively. It did a lot of damage. And 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 why isn't someone accountable? And and the who the, and the someone is the company that allowed it to happen, and the person that did it. And there's all kinds of people that did all kinds of things. Let's face it, in all mm -hmm. kinds of companies. And so then it comes out when a Jennifer Valentine comes to light with what she went through. And then, and then she has people rally around her because they went through some things too that weren't appropriate and negatively affected their life. And then what was the company doing all this time? Well, mm -hmm. the company knew of some of it and the company didn't know of some of it and the company didn't do some things and the company didn't do some things. The argument would be that the company didn't do enough. And they put, you know, there's an expression that says, not all flowers should be treated the same. The high performing flowers, the ones that give you really bright colors, they should get a little more water than the other ones. The talent gets rewarded. The lesser talent gets shoo shooed aside, particularly when they complain. Mm -hmm. Therein lies the issue. Mm -hmm. Those who were complaining and shooed aside have a bigger voice now than they've ever had before. And mm. that's appropriate. And mm. that's what happened. Mm. And things catch up to us. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. I am. Um, Does that I, make I was, sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great yeah, statement. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well said. Well said. I was it, it, trying it, to. I, I, if I could just add on to that, too. You know, it, it's uh, f as, as someone who has yelled at people in a radio setting, uh, as you know, and we used to call it yelling, we used to call it arguing, right? Um, as someone who knew all the players involved and didn't discount the experiences that those who came forward came up with, I didn't have any of those stories or experiences, right? I, it, I just didn't. I, you know, obviously my issues were different. What I was like was different. Everybody's different in those environments, right? But to me, that was, um, you know, everything we do is earned, right? Over time. Um, you know, in my situation, I had to say, Hey, listen, uh, that was, that was a dude that was given a lot early that had to, you know, kind of manage, uh, how this whole thing worked, what he thought he was. Uh, and I've since obviously had a difference of opinion when it comes to how you should treat people you're trying to win a race with, right? Like a very serious conversation that I had with someone the other day was about this very thing. And it's about reciprocally helping others. Right. But well, I think what people don't understand is the stress and the, and the, you know, and it never gives you an excuse to treat people like shit ever, ever, ever. But the stress involved in doing yeah. a radio program, a daily in lock, you know, this and, and how you get a referendum on your work every three months, uh, the manipulation of people in that industry, the way that they've treated performers, whether they be high performers or low performers and the way that they have change lives in that industry over an extended period of time because they've treated people like assets. Right. And, and to your point, yeah. the flowers that deserve more water deserve more water because they drive the prettier colors. They're, you know, high performers and stuff like that. But my, my situation was after the flowers whole thing happened, dollars. yeah, they do. Um, but my, after the whole thing happened with John, um, it was hard for me to kind of figure out, you know, because it's easy to jump on the bandwagon, but what you don't realize is what that comes with, right? The guy loses his job. Uh, he, he, you know, everything that he's done over a spectacularly successful by, you know, monetary stretches and by rating stretches, fantastically successful, 
you know, 30 year radio career. This is now the lasting memory of that. And it's just a fucking shame. I mean, it's a shame that people were treated so poorly. It's a shame that's that, that this has happened. It's a shame that the fallout hasn't just attached itself to this man's legacy. It's good for the people who wanted to be heard. They're being heard, but then you've got the fallout of the people that still work there, right? That, that have lost a heritage morning show. Uh, you got the salespeople that have lost something that uh, was typically very easy to sell. And then you've got people that worked with, with John who, you know, the Ryans and the Johns and the different people uh, who are really out on a limb out on their own. Nobody's. I feel, I feel particularly bad for the people that lost their jobs at that point, uh, Ryan and John, room. the support in the room, because uh, they weren't part of the reason that this all blew up. They were rather innocent bystanders. I stand behind that. The two young gentlemen that are solid broadcasters and, and, and were decent humans and continue to be that. And I feel badly for them. I always like to look for what could have gone better and 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 what's the lesson moving forward and i yeah. think it might just be this um how could that have been how could that have gone differently here's maybe one way if the person that was accused of doing these things said to himself or herself in any business that's happening right now Oh man, I shouldn't have been that way with those people, and 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 maybe I should give them a phone call or go for coffee, uh, whatever they feel comfortable with, and say, you know what? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. An apology can go a long way. Mm -hmm. It's it's not usually about money with people, although you know if they get legal representation, the legal representation needs to get paid, so there has to be money generated from whatever the lawsuit is, if there's a lawsuit. But but aside from that. What people really want is to be treated with kindness, decency, and dignity. They want respect. And, mm -hmm. and if there hasn't been respect, all they really usually want is an apology. And an apology just acknowledges that I treated you unfairly, and I'm sorry I did, and I'm sorry I made you feel like that. Mm. If that had happened kind of over the years, I bet none of this would have happened. Yeah. Mm. You, you know what? I, I said this yeah. to somebody uh, about the about this in particular, but I've also mentioned this in the past. Um, I, I think people would be surprised at how many morning show, we'll just use morning shows. You got two or three people in a room. I think people would be shocked about how few of those shows actually get along. Like yeah. outside of that room, they're not hanging out. <laughs> yeah. And so <laughs> and it has to I, do with I think, the stress. I think, people would, I think people would be shocked at how many times they're listening to a radio show and the two of them actually fucking hate each other <laughs> and that they're just putting on a performance. And, and that doesn't excuse what John or any of us have done in a room while the, you know, while Kim Mitchell's playing. Um, but it, does always it always does. he always takes a dump on kim mitchell finds a way to do it all the time he never <laughs> fails never fails but that's I a only great got point three minutes and 12 seconds here all right Listen, uh, that's a great it's I'm a great be point screaming at you for three minutes and 12 seconds <laughs> patty we're gonna come back on it yeah, we gotta I know. call the winner um, but, but listen, I got to tell you, um, appreciated your insight and, and not only that, just having a conversation and catching up with you, Jeff Woods is our guest. Uh, you got a split. I uh, promised you'd be out of here before, uh, four o'clock. I know you've got some business to take care of. Uh, I want to thank you, Jeff Woods at Jeff Woods radio on Twitter, blue hotel on Instagram, uh, blue hotel, wherever you get your podcast, Apple, Google, Spotify, subscribe and records and rock stars. He is one of the greatest interviewers of our time. He's also, uh, yes, just a is. solid individual. And he's the coolest fucking dilf you'll ever meet, <laughs> ladies and fun gentlemen. To fuck Jeff it. Fun to drink with. Fun to drink with. Hey, we got we you need to, here on time. We need to do that again one day, guys. I miss you in I, person, and I appreciate your time and decency and uh, and support. Always, so thank you. Always, uh, go Both get it. You. We'll talk to you soon. Have a safe trip, and we'll uh, we'll out. see you in the next couple of weeks. Take Jeff care, Woods, ladies you. and gentlemen. Records and rock stars and Blue Hotel, the podcast. That he totally made man, up that he had to take somebody to the airport. No, he didn't. He's really got to go to the airport. <laughs> or maybe he did. I don't know. He, he totally did. Right. Did. <laughs> I got an hour for you fucks. That's what he said. I texted him this morning. I'm like, hey, man, 
you got a minute. I want to talk to you about your new podcast because we just added it to DeanBlundell.com and you can go and get his podcast awesome. called Blue Hotel. A uh, bunch of different podcasts. September 23rd, he said, is, yes, is the first one. Yes, sir. 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 Loved his thoughts on the Derringer situation, too. It's not something we, I mean, we yeah. dealt with it a couple of times and talked about it a couple of times, but he brings up a fucking great point about apologizing. The yeah. magic of an apology, if you can bring yourself to do it, unless you're mm. the Fonz. But it, it's pretty incredible. Self-awareness. If you can take care of that stuff in your life, pretty simple well, shit. It, like we're talking to Tom Morazzo on Wednesday, right? Tom Morazzo is one of the organizers of the convoy, one of the big cats, one of the big swinging dicks in the convoy uh, business. Mm-hmm. Uh, and everybody is very fully aware of how I feel about the convoy. He and I spent like a couple of months shooting back at each other, calling each other names. And I've sent him a note the other night. And I'm like, because I, I, I realized, like, I'm like, I got to stop calling people names. I got to be part of some kind of solution. I can't just keep stunting off the back of idiocy. I got to do something, right? So I reached out to him. I'm like, hey, listen, I want to apologize for me calling you meat, among other things, over the past couple of months. Uh, because if we don't end up talking at some point, we're in trouble. Like some of us have to start talking because I don't understand it. So anyway, he apologized too, agreed to come on the show on Wednesday. And that was from an apology. That was just for me saying, yeah. hey, dude. Sorry for calling you names. Doesn't matter what you believe or what you think, which he's going to come on and share with us on Wednesday. But uh, I needed to do that because that was my job. That was my side of the street that I had to fucking clean up and go, okay, listen, if you need to move on mentally for yourself, you're going to have to apologize. And it was amazing because he he came right back with like an olive branch and we're sharing all the branches and now we're DMing each other. And I completely disagree with him. He completely disagrees with me. But like we've hated each other from afar for a long period of time. Right. And what solved that is two guys going, ah, fuck. Sorry, man. You know, even though we think each other are crazy. Yeah. Sorry about that. I I, got to say, I'm really glad you're at that point because as much as I appreciate the, um, some of the fallout of, of the content we've done, I do walk away from some of these going, "Mm," you know, and then the continued online getting things trending, I'm always a little bit. It doesn't feel right to me. Some sometimes. Right. Um, and, and again, I've been a part of it and, but it, it, it has, it hasn't made me feel. And I feel like every once in a while, even though I agree quite often with, with, um, with sort of the, the basis of what it is that we're trying to accomplish here, Quite often, I feel like I need to represent the other side, and then all of a sudden, you're defending something you don't even mean to defend because I feel like I get dragged into, like with the Andy Lee conversation. I mean, I'm trying to defend her, trying to, uh, you know what I mean? Like, it, and yeah. and that's 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 not the best example because I thought we did okay with with her, I but, but then on the other hand, then you get off. You get off the podcast and then you get attacked on the other. Eh. Yeah, it doesn't. End. But that was like it was my my understanding of where we are is the same as you. Right. And uh, we've driven uh, miles down the go fuck yourself road. If you don't believe in decency and, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, and being well, nice to your neighbor and trying to protect the citizenry in this country. And I've taken extreme offense to people saying they have a lack of freedom in this country. But I, what we too. haven't done, but what we haven't done is this. We haven't sat down and said, explain it all to me then. Give me your whole thing. What do you believe yeah. is really happening? Yeah, and I'm glad and, we're there. My, and, uh, and can I and, tell a quick story? Yeah, yeah. Well, it okay. won't be quick, okay. but you can tell a story. Yeah. Okay. Sure. This plays right into the conversation, and I know you're going to wrap it up as soon as I'm done here. But um, my wife... Uh, called me out for something on the weekend because every time now that we drive by a car with a bunch of fucking Canadian flags on it, I get triggered and I get mad and I start yelling in the car and I'm like, oh, I bet you there's a goddamn cross on their fucking rear view mirror as well. And sure enough, and it just, it drives me nuts that they've co-opted the Canadian flag, the freedom fighters. Mm-hmm. And she's like, you got to stop. You're just as bad. You're part of the problem. That's our flag. You're just assuming that that's, even though I'm probably right, 90% of the time when you see a car with four fucking flags on it, guess what that means? Um, But she's like, you're part of the problem. And I'm like, you're right. Yeah. I'm sitting here screaming at the inside of my windshield 
because I'm mad they've taken away a symbol that means so much to me. Um, it, but it was just, it was a good wake up call. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and, you and, know, and I'm look glad at we're it. doing this. I'm glad we're having these conversations now with these people. Right. Yeah. Me too. But, but the reason why I wanted to have it is because I got to figure it out. Right. Like it, it wasn't about me deciding that, that I was wrong in my assessment of what's going on. I'm still very firm in all of it. Right. Like I, yeah. I truly do believe people should get vaccinated, look out for their neighbors. I don't believe Klaus Schwab is coming to give me a vasectomy and take care of, take all of my shit from me. I don't believe in any of the things any of these people believe. But what I do believe, which I didn't, I would say six months ago, maybe even two, maybe even one, is that I, I could provide a space for anybody that believed these things that I truly think are ridiculous in some to some extent and ask them how they got there because a lot of things and i said this on twitter i'm not going to punch down anymore i'm not going to call people names anymore i'm going to try not to it's going to be fucking hard really difficult for it's me like not the to call judgment people names. piece but yeah You're, it is yeah but yeah if, it, if i'm doing that while they're doing that to me anybody and i'm telling people hey there's a better way but i'm not exporting that better way in my activities and how i act on a daily basis i'm in fucking trouble Right. Mm -hmm. And and th this life is about my experience and me going through it with a healthy mind. And so to have a healthy mind, I need to literally get into the trenches, go and talk to these people and say, explain it to me then. What are we missing? Right. Like, how is it you've arrived at this perspective that vaccines are bad? The government's bad. Only a conservative government should be put in. Where's your religion? Where's your belief system? What is it? Explain it to me, because we're so many moving parts to this thing. And you've got Diagonal and then you got people in Western Canada and you got people in Ontario and you got people in Nova Scotia. You've got church groups. You've got. Uh, yeah. you know, police, uh, p former police guys, former army guys. And I'm like, I want to find, I want to talk to as many people as I can, almost like a research project, but I want to do it live and go, okay, fuck, we've all missed the point. Explain it. And, and without giving up my position or saying, because this isn't about, I, Tom's going to come on on Wednesday, Tom Marazzo and in good faith, right? He's going to come on. It's not a gotcha moment. He actually it was kind enough to go, hey, I'll take any questions from anybody. I'm happy to answer them. But I want to talk about it from a perspective of what he wow. believes, not what he thinks is real, what he believes. And I'll tell him what I believe, not what I think is real, but what I believe is going on. Because I think I represent that middle part that fucking hates both polar ends of the extremes. And I think he represents yeah. something that is some I haven't I don't identify with at all. So. Like, instead of calling each other fucking names on Twitter, sit down and go, fuck, okay, tell me how you got there. I'll tell you how I got here. And then we'll go from there. Or, or, surprisingly, you might actually shed light on some common ground. And, and, yeah. and it, it might surprise you when we do have that conversation. I mean, that's the interesting thing about it. I do, I do think, though, that, and, and this is what I've been struggling with, especially lately with a couple of things that have happened in my personal life. Um, I'm really struggling right now with the fact that there are some people out there that are just, they have no concept of, of the greater community. Um, they're just, they're just not good people. I've always sort of had this idea um, and I've tried to find ways to reinforce this, this position, this, this, this thought process in my life that even if somebody does something bad, there still might be a chance that there's a redeeming quality about them. There's something about them. There there's good in everyone. Like I've always wanted to believe that even if I don't, even if I don't agree with you, you're on a completely different path. Um, you and I will never be friends. It doesn't matter if I, if I can't come to terms with, with something you did, I've always sort of gone, oh, okay, all right. I've got, I've got to believe I need to go to bed tonight thinking that this person that did that one thing, that there's, there's some goodness in them that, that their contribution to the world that we live in is positive on some level. Unfortunately, I've met some people that that's just not the case. <laughs> They're just complete pieces of shit. And I'm really struggling with it. Yeah. 
Did you see like, what Jamie Salay tweeted today? Because part of my new thing is I'm not going to punch down, but I'll punch up. And I think you can punch up at Jamie Sally. But I'm going to try not to fucking call her names. Her and Theo are two of the leaders of this movement uh, that yeah. I think is ridiculous. Yeah. And um, to your point, terrible people that make the world around them a terrible place. This is a tweet that she put up this morning. Jamie Sally, gold medalist, one of Canada's darlings. Nothing. This is all caps. In case you're not watching this on YouTube where you can subscribe to the Dean Blundell show. Same thing with Twitter. Dean Blundell TV. Nothing can stop what's coming, Jamie says, with the praying emoji hands. When you know, you know. And I I looked at that and I'm like, hmm, Dean, bad week to turn over a new leaf. <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted to sewer her because she's so fucking stupid. And I'm not calling her names, but that is a stupid tweet. Do you know why it's a stupid tweet? That's called vague booking, where yeah. you insert fear into some vague comment, and you're the only person yeah. that knows what's going on. That is legitimately cult shit. She is yeah. a cult member. She is in a cult. Yeah. She is not smart. Same with Theo Flurry. These are not smart people. And it's funny because I tweeted that out the other day. I'm like, hey, just so you know, I'm not punching down. I'll be punching up from now on. Theo Flurry's still in play. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to try and be a little nicer about when I say that people like Jamie you gotta forgive are literally yourself. too dumb to be on Twitter. You got to be and able to insert fear into yourself. the world. But to that, yeah. to your point, I don't want to do the same thing. I don't want to introduce negativity after something this legitimately fucking fear mongeringly stupid where she's like, nothing can stop what's coming when you know, you know, she knows nothing. Jamie Salet is not a smart person and she's proved this time and time and is, time is, again is that religious yes. i i yeah, i don't is. know maybe i think it might be that, i don't know maybe she thinks the rapture's happening i don't know what she rapture? thinks it's very vague yeah oh, it's very man. vague but she but she's got a bunch of people this morning going ooh something's coming from jamie Salé. so here's what she gets she gets negative attention she gets positive attention doesn't matter it's just attention then she gets uh people like me talk she refuses to block me which is incredible she blocks everybody won't block me i don't know why maybe she's trying to assume it doesn't matter but i am going to chase this down forever theo flurry i'll chase him down forever uh i i, I have no problem joking around and having fun at their expense but <coughs> my point is is that publicly to be worse than them isn't helping us. That's what I'm trying to repeal. I don't yeah. think it's going to go great, but I'm going to do my best. Because, in fact, dude, I'm yeah. so tired of it. It's crazy. Like, I'm so exhausted of harboring hatred for a group mm -hmm. of people who, by and large, I don't think some of this is their fault. They've been co-opted. Mm -hmm. Some aren't smart enough. Some are just mm -hmm. mentally too detached or, or can't put the fucking square peg in the round hole because of the genetics or because of whatever, or it's an IQ thing. But to continue to call these people names and to continue to base these people it's doesn't not, contribute to anything positive. No, Nothing. no, it's not. It, it isn't. And that, and yeah, and I'm glad. I'm glad. Like I said, I'm glad we're there. And again, I, everyone will be okay if you slip up every once in a while and call her fucking a moron, right? Like even though you said you were going to be a better person today. <laughs> well, I'm still human. It's not like I can fucking fix it. Uh, <laughs> speaking of idiots, did you see the, uh, did you, did you see, <laughs> did you see Bob the Builder stop Vermont to do as the queen of Canada, stop her truck in uh, Edmonton or sorry, in Winnipeg this weekend? I just all Friday? this. I was, I, uh, I unplugged. I completely Good for unplugged. You. Yeah. Well, yeah. I would have too. Yeah. If I were you. Um, I tuned in I wanna... every once in a while to see if there's any updates on that Saskatchewan, um, the the stabbing thing. But oh, um, James I was following Nation. that. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. But, I don't even know what to um, say about that. It was not something I, I could bring up or write about it. Me neither. Um, other than uh, we put up a post where you can go and donate to the families who've lost loved ones that are part of that oh, stabbing spree. Is that so, on? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did we put yeah. that up on Twitter? Yeah, it's on my Twitter feed. You can share it if you like. Mubin okay, actually put it out. Yeah. Mubin put it out. Right now. Uh, and thoughts and prayers, uh, obviously, to those uh, affected by what's going on in Saskatchewan. It's just brutal. Just brutal. Um, brutal. But uh, not far away, Winnipeg, uh, Friday. You remember Queen Romana Dadula, the lady uh, who dresses in purple, says she's uh, been visited by Vladimir Putin and she's uh, plugged all the Chinese tunnels underneath underneath Canada. 
the cult leader. Yeah. You remember her? Yeah, yeah. She tried to arrest a bunch of Peterborough officers. So she's in Winnipeg. I want you to watch this because you'll. I know you love Winnipeg. It's a great city. This guy, it is a good city. It is. Construction worker sees Romana de Dulo's uh, RV rolling down the street, takes matters into his own hands. She met her match that day. This is fucking hilarious. Move out. Move out. Move out. I out. think I've had beers with that. Dude. Out. Maybe turn right and go around. Look turn right and go around. Fuck turn. You. you just keep saying fuck you. Double okay. birds. There's Ramana telling him to turn around. You're this is from the inside of their Can RV. You call, Wait um, for him to wave. Police. Can you <laughs> record this, please? I'm recording. Record it. Yes. I'm recording. He's blocking. I. Security. He deserves a medal. So he's standing in the Surround middle of the street. Uh, this is just off of Portage Street in Winnipeg, downtown Winnipeg. Construction I worker is giving right the double place. bird if you're just turn joining right. us on the I actually audience. got my vasectomy right. just a couple of blocks RB2. up <laughs> from there. RB2. And he's smiling. He's doing a Just saying, fuck you, over and over again. Waving. Calling him crazy. Yeah, yeah. Call 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 he's got the double birds up this now right for here. almost a minute. Now what he's doing is ripping the sticker off the front of their RV with their logo on it. And they're honking at him. And he's he vandalizing. Give a fuck. That one, Take huh? pictures. Take pictures. <laughs> now he's given uh, another car that showed up with security fingers, and now he's rolling up the. You're like, it's still with he's the fingers. He's telling the, everybody he's to fuck off. He's part of this group. <laughs> Make sure this guy's on. Look at this guy. That he Do we know this guy? At the RV. Yeah, yeah. Do We're we? gonna have him on the show on Thursday. <laughs> Selling burgers is his account on Twitter. Now he gets. He has an interaction with their security guards here. As he's talking to her, it's his security. He doesn't All give a fuck. And then he scared. starts saying, fuck you to them. Tells them that they're not going to go any further down the street. Says he's on the sidewalk. And the white coats, the white shirts, her security. Or, I don't know what they're fucking doing. But listen to Romana. She's not happy. Who's in the lead car? In the driver's seat? Lead car. Go back in. Do not engage. Okay. Here come the birds we have, again. We have What's called the, the police. Here? What's the address here? What's the address here? What's the address here, please? Fuck you. On your receipt, Joe. Fuck you. What's the address here? Fuck you. Fuck you. He doesn't care. I love him. Oh, I can't believe we're getting him on. Yeah. Yes, I have somebody that's like stopping us from going through a parking lot and vandalizing our vehicle. And he doesn't care. Yeah, He's just not, standing there going, whatever, bring the heat. I don't care what you guys do. You guys are the biggest useless turds on the, on the, on the fucking country. I don't call the police. doesn't matter. This guy is now an instant celebrity. Bob the Builder, which everybody called him, was trending all day Friday, all day Saturday because of this guy. Is that what that was? I didn't oh, yeah. even. I saw it. I saw yeah, it yesterday. It. Go back oh, my God. In. That's amazing. Good for him. <laughs> he does not give a fuck. He's yes, just swearing at him too. I All the guys from his deal. work are like, "Hey, come on back in. Don't waste your time with these guys." Right that was the dude. That was like the greatest start to my fucking weekend. I thought that that was absolutely brilliant. But it gets better because Romana decided <laughs> decided after that to post pictures of shotgun shells in her car, which she did. Twelve gauge shotgun shells. Uh, she also posted not just 12 gauge shotgun shells. She then yesterday decided she was going to tell everybody that the hell's angels. So she's just this fucking compulsive liar. She, she said that, uh, Ro Roger Stone had sent her a hundred thousand dollars. She said that he was going to take over a campaign. She said, uh, 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 MBS, um, the, the dude, uh, who's in charge of, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, sent her a note and, and like faked it. She just photoshot. No, 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 seriously. And then sent a note saying Vladimir Putin. And sent me a note saying he's coming to visit me. Like she's literally fucking insane. She she creates and photoshops a whole bunch of different shit from people that don't know her. Like, oh, the, this is the government of Saudi Arabia and the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. They're behind us 100 percent everybody. And then signs it from um, Osama bin Laden or whatever the guy's name is. Doesn't even matter. But the funny part was is that yesterday uh, she put out a tweet and she's like, just so you know, Hell's Angels contacted me and they told me that they're going to protect us from now on. This is the letter that she photoshopped, by the way. It's made out to Her Majesty the Queen in her RV. The address is, quote, Mobile Government Motorcade. <laughs> uh, 
Madam, it's come to our attention that you're in need of immediate security to protect you and your team members during your national royal tour. As you may know, we have over 43 chapters across Canada, hundreds of full patch members and hundreds of uh, more puppet club members. Given our significant and national scope, I believe that we'd be in a great position to offer you security. Should you, you accept got to be kidding we can, me. No, dude, we can mobilize a team very quickly and provide many riders to accompany your motorcade. Please reach out to me at your earliest convenience. Should you accept this offer, I have the honor to be, Madam, Your Majesty's humble, obedient servant, signed National President, Hell's Angels Motorcycle Club. Interesting. Uh, some sourcing on the internet yesterday. The signature comes from the lead singer of a band in Germany called Tokyo Hotel. Uh, so they photoshopped the lead singer of a German pop band uh, as uh, Mom Boucher, which Mom Boucher, of course, if you know anything about the Hells Angels, they don't take kindly to two things. You misrepresenting them or you using their patch, which she indeed did in this letterhead. So now she is in deep, deep trouble with a group of people you do not want to piss off. <laughs> yeah. Dude, she did it. She fucking she mocked up a letter like a fake letter from the Hells Angels yesterday. Like a fake letter. Fucking bullshit. Yeah. It's brilliant. Uh, she has she has so many problems now because I don't know if you know anything. I'm sure you do. You know a few things about the Hells Angels. Not the people you fuck with. I, I, I don't know much. I mean, I obviously I'm not. I did have I did have somebody that um back in the day uh knew one of the guys that was like high up. And um what he what he told me was um, and it's not like he was friends with him. He just said the thing that you probably aren't aware of is just the structure of the organization is quite complex and it's run by, um, by like, it's run by people that you would not, you would be surprised at their level of intelligence. I guess he was, he referenced one guy that I don't think actually has anything to do with the hell's angels anymore, but was like a le legitimately um, a genius was mm -hmm. off the charts, off the IQ charts, smart and made his way up to a certain level or rank or whatever within the, within the hell's angels organization. And, 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 and it's a criminal organization. I mean, people are, that's I'm not telling tales out of school, but it doesn't necessarily mean there aren't people that aren't uh, smart that are involved with it. Right. That mm -hmm. it's not just a bunch of thugs. It's, and it's interesting you say that because I just remember him him talking a little bit about it, and and that that does not sound like something that they would that they would appreciate at all on no. any level. No, not at all. Linz joins us, Ryan Lindley at Ryan Lindley on Twitter, host of the Linz Report as well. He just uh, popped in. Um, you know, you know a thing or two about uh, biker gangs. Right. You think Hell's Angels take kindly to their uh, patch being used in some letterhead uh, on a fake Photoshop thing saying we're going to protect the Queen of Canada? You crazy, crazy fuck. I have a feeling that those RVs will have electrical issues at some point in the next couple of weeks. Unexplained. Nobody will know what happened. <laughs> uh -huh. That's my guess. Uh, Linz is here, everybody. Um, why do you sound like shit, bud? <laughs> Well, I left my voice in Alberta. Yeah. Um, yeah, this was, uh, this was it's worse yesterday song. and it was bad today. And it's, uh, I'm in a lot of, like, I'm in physical pain. Alberta <laughs> literally put me in physical pain. They're, they're on a different gear, Dean. I'm telling you, it's a different gear that I just am not accustomed to. And I can I hold my you. own. Don't get I me know. wrong. Yeah. But, uh, uh yeah there was a there was so a moment there was an exchange let me recap let me recap real quick uh yeah. ryan lindley decided he's going to take a surprise trip out to edmonton to join lachlan yeah. for this hair metal radio show they were going to do go and see motley crew drink with yeah. the boys he was going to go and show the albertans how wrestling. to drink he was going to he went to community wrestling event he palled around with a little person all weekend um and and i and i just you're hurting today you're having a tough time and you're one of the best drinkers I've ever met, but yeah, yeah. take me through the constitution of Alberta drinkers. So I get there Thursday. Was it? Th I can't even remember. Yeah. Thursday. It was Thursday. Um, Cause 
<laughs> I I told you the story about Chris picking me up and literally nine o'clock in the morning having a can of Pilsner in the parking lot in front of the RCMP. Nobody gives a shit. Like I swear, <laughs> it's the Wild West. When they call it the Wild, nobody cares. So I have a beer and um we take off we went to uh one of their local watering holes there the that jt's we had uh, a couple of pints there we met up with dave army dave and when you you know about army chris and a lot of people have kind of seen army dave on this podcast you don't hear him he doesn't talk very much on the pod but army chris is like a, a boy scout when it comes to um the 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 consumption uh, ratios that Chris speaks of. Um, yeah. So it started Thursday. We ended up at that, uh, Friday we went to that, called it the monster dome, but it was just some community center wrestling thing with Jimmy. And we got some great footage, great interviews outside of that place, talking to people. It was, and again, it's the drinking never stopped the entire time. Um, uh, and it starts in the morning there with Bailey's like this morning I had a coffee on my way to my, like my real life job. Mm -hmm. And uh, it it was delicious. I'm like, Oh, this is what coffee's supposed to. I remember this. This was, I thought I was never going to have this because I didn't think I was going to make it home. I really did. I was in that airport yesterday and I didn't drink it all. Yes. I had one Caesar yesterday. They made me drink a Caesar before I left to try and even me out a bit. <laughs> and by fuck i was yeah uh i got on that plane i didn't feel good and then i got the wrath okay so the flights airports most 90 percent of the stories you're hearing are political slant bullshit my flight into edmonton was perfect flawless toronto was flawless edmonton was flawless i was in and out of that plane in 20 minutes last night we get to toronto uh to pearson and I guess because it's a holiday, they're having still their staffing. It's a staffing crisis. It's 11 o'clock at night here. And there's nobody there to take us off the plane. So we're ready. The plane's parked and there's no stair people like where they bring the stairs over. There's no ground yeah. control guys. We literally, and the, the captain was laughing. He goes, welcome to Toronto, folks. We're going to be here a bit. So I didn't roll into the house until like 1.30. I had to be at work for six. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. So I'm I, like, I might, like, I feel like somebody hit me in the chest with a bat right yeah. now. The res darts, the copious amounts of booze. And I haven't even gotten to Saturday, Saturday and Sunday were like the, that was the, by Sunday, by Saturday with Locke, we yeah. had a great time at, at Army Crest's. It was a fantastic show. The boys were a lot of fun. Everybody that came was really, really cool. Like it, it was just a really good vibe. The party was great. I met some people that, um, I, I, Shirley McQueen. I met Shirley McQueen. She just came and got wasted with me. I was like, <laughs> I used to listen to you when I was a kid. This is amazing. Hmm. Um, and then Sunday rolled around. I thought, okay, it hurts like a lot. Jimmy, get up. We're doing this. So I got, I, I, I roused Jimmy and I said, we got to, I guess we got to start with the Bailey's again and get the fur off so we can go to this concert. So I made it about halfway through the day. And then finally I hit the wall. Like that was the switch you're done shut her down and i started drinking water so i started i was drinking Dude, water for pussy. i know i i it was call me whatever you want I, what, they did, what the only thing they didn't call me was an ambulance which is probably yeah. what they should have called me <laughs> and you tapped out you tapped yeah, out you tapped out had, saturday sunday afternoon so did they keep drinking did everybody oh, keep drinking oh yeah did they yeah, even no. stop yeah yeah no yeah, dude, i went i, I went along with everything what did you do to him what did you guys do I, to him i listen don't to him. listen i I don't do this. Like this isn't me. Like I, I, I jump in the pool every once in a while, and I get yeah. out and I grab a towel and I and I call my wife and she comes and gets me. Um, should so, that happened Saturday? I should have gotten the car with you. Is what I should have done. Yeah. <laughs> I should have hidden yeah. your trunk. I because it was... it's I don't do this. I've never. I've always been the punch out guy, and I'm never a two day guy. Like I remember one one year we did an event um down in in Banff and we got up after we drove down there on the Friday and then got up went hard Friday night and then we got up Saturday morning and um I couldn't I just I I couldn't I had one beer and I had to put it down I'm like I can't I can't do this and the look of disappointment on that group's face was just they were so disgusted with me 
to this day, one of my biggest regrets is not rolling tape on the speech I got from Grant Johnson. And it started with, do you think I want to drink two days in a row or three days? In no, but I do it. And, and it was like a literally a five minute rant from one of the most composed people I've ever met, Grant Johnson. Yet I, I wasn't going to keep going with them. And they were just, they were angry. I needed I, to have your I resolve. always have outs, Linz. Your biggest mistake was saying I'll stay at, at Army Chris's because you got no out, right? Jimmy, sure. we lose Jimmy about once once every month or two months. We lose him to to Army Chris's place. And this morning I looked at him and he looked he looked like a, a turd. Like he looked like <laughs> yeah. a fucking dried turd <laughs> that was just about to die. Yep. Sounds like shit, looks like shit, hasn't eaten, hasn't been drinking fluids. Uh, like hygiene, hygiene was a like a just sort of a a, a passing annoyance, an afterthought. <laughs> afterthought shows up, just stinking up the control room. And I looked at him oh, and dude. I said, "I've just come. I've just come to the conclusion that Army Chris is going to kill you. Like you're going to die because you're hanging out with that man." And and I I remember there was a moment there where Linz was pretty confident in his drinking abilities. Yeah. And it was, I had to drop some stuff off. They were trying to play some stupid practical joke on me. I had no idea Linz was there. I was, I had no patience at all. I needed, I was busy. I had shit to do. And they're trying to call me into the back because Linz was back there. And he, apparently he was working for the city. And I'm like, there's no city. And Army Chris doesn't sell shit at all. And I'm like, I don't have time for this. What the fuck? Anyway, um, we were standing there and we're having a beer, ironically. And um, Linz and time Army that, Chris though. and Dave are sitting there going back and forth about who, you know, who has the better drinking ability. And Linz went, um, well, I'll be talking. I'll he said, I'll send video to you tonight when I'm talking these guys in. And I went, Oh, you're, <laughs> you're in good company. Did yeah. I 100%. What a, what a, what a pompous, stupid, fucking ignorant thing for me to say. <laughs> Seriously. They kicked my ass. Yeah. Have Army Chris like knows it? when to pull the pin. I mean, oh, he I goes all day, all day, all day, all day, but he knows yep. when he needs to yank her. Like, but yank have you pull seen, cord have you seen Dave a is. group of men or group of people drink that steady over a four day period of time and be like functional? Like, because you're not functional, right? And, and you took Sunday afternoon off, but like, yeah. The, it, it it is it has to be it's like a different mindset out there right western canada yeah. it's like drinking is an activity drinking is a hobby it's not yeah. like out here where it's like oh i take the edge off with a couple of drinks at the end of the night out mm -hmm. there it's like pickleball or going for a round of golf like, and when you don't show up for that round of golf or that round of beers you get mercilessly made fun of like it's out here. It's like, mm -hmm. no, I'm good. Everybody's like, oh, okay, no problem. It's what I, I believe that's why they call us pussies, if I'm not mistaken. I think you're finding that out. One of the videos that you sent, which I thought was really funny, it was uh, Jimmy sleeping. I don't know what morning this is, but fuck, is this funny? I got the sound. I put the surround sound on and everything. <laughs> this is before the concert. Yeah. I can smell them from here. <laughs> <laughs> He looks unwell. He looks like death. And this is like Sunday midday. Lack of like, absolutely no concern about the nose hair. Like, no. Oh yeah, and that you see the the fuzz on his mouth. Like he like missed an entire <laughs> corner for like a month. Like a month, it's grown out. Like there's a month worth of growth there. It's almost like he continually misses that one spot. We kept telling him, yeah. Jimmy, wipe that shit off your oh never mind. It's your that's your, your hair. This is him, uh this is him after the show. Is that correct? That's Jimmy after uh, the show. He looks great. This, yeah, <laughs> this is on our way out. Um yeah. we were uh Def Leopard was about halfway through and and Jimmy said to me, he says, Listen, you've never been to a thing like this with me. There's a lot of walking to do. Um, and it's gonna take us some time. So I'm like, yeah, I'm totally down. Let's go before the crowd. But I didn't realize we were gonna miss half a concert to miss the crowd, but we did. Yeah. Look at him though. Look at he had such a good time. He had such a good time.
This is at Motley Crue, Poison, yeah. Death Leopard at Commonwealth Stadium. That's Jimmy standing there and a group of people. Uh, ladies love this guy, too. Like, look at him. He's yeah. standing there with his pint. He's being kissed by all the ladies that showed up for crew. Like, yeah. this is, this is. oh, there's a couple, some old twins. smoke there. Yeah, twins. They were twins. Not bad. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I like those twins. Um, But it, that had to be a trip. Right, walking through like a crowd of people with a little person, it's like a ticket to ride. Like I want to take him it. with me to Canada's well, Wonderland, not, see if I can get on rides and stuff. It's not just a little person; it's it's Jimmy from Cruise from the locker yeah. room, and they that all know him. And stadium knows him. Yeah, yep. That in it was hard to move. Like when we finally got to our floor spots, it was okay because yeah. we were in one spot and people were just coming to him, which was okay. But trying to get from a point A to point B in an event like that with him. You're, we stopped every 10 feet. People were grabbing them, trying to buy him beer. People just handing beers to him as they're walking by. They didn't even stop. They're like, oh, hey, Jim. And just gave him a beer. He's like, thank you. And then just kept walking. It's, it's, it was it was Fucking a trip. It, it was something yeah, to see. Here's a video of it. Um, by the way, you'll see the video. This is uh, from Lynn's personal collection, Locke. I uh, want to point out the quality of individuals in Edmonton that go to a poison slash Def Leppard slash Motley Crue show. There are a lot of moules, a lot of moules, by the way. This is a good looking crowd, I'm telling you. Obi-Wan shirt, too, by the way, which I yeah. think is fucking hilarious. Which you can get yeah. at the Locker Room merch page, yes. by the way. <laughs> Obi-Wan. <laughs> so oh, good. Man. It was such a good time. Yeah. Do you yeah. have a new appreciation, or do the people of Alberta scare you now? Can I tell you something? Yeah. I have a different appreciation now. You know why? No. I didn't see one fuck Trudeau flag, and we did a lot of traveling around. Mm -hmm. um, I think we were wrong. I think a lot of it were wrong about what happens out there. I think we have a lot of preconceptions. There might be some little pockets here and there, but Edmonton yeah. is definitely not one of them. You see it here. You, you, there's, uh, there, there's two two doors down. There's a big, big fuck Trudeau flag on a house, on a, on his door, right? <laughs> I miss yeah. that, but I mean, that's my neighborhood. Right. And, and, yeah. and, and it, you see there again, like I said, there's pockets of it and it, but it, it's, um, it's surprisingly contained. I, and, but I will say like, and I've said this before, um, the level of the level of hatred for not everyone's driving around with a fuck Trudeau flag on their car, but yeah. the level of hatred for, for the for the liberals and and politics as a whole right now is very very it's palatable it's up it's there high here yeah 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 but it's surprisingly you know again I I make this it this is a stupid analogy but I'll make it if people don't if they just hear about our show there's a drunk mm -hmm. dyslexic alcohol midget on it and Lachlan's on it and, and remember me from power or they they've heard stories about me from power or bear or whatever. They've got a preconceived idea of what it is that we do. Then we do an event and this happens every time we do an event where the sales staff will come out and they'll go, hold on. What is this? This, this isn't your crowd. There's a preconceived notion of what it, and that's Alberta. Mm hmm. The people that listen to our show, it's a wide swath of a wide representation of what it is that Alberta is about. And there's there's good people out here, hardworking people. There's family people, right? You know, it, it's, yeah. it's 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 a good it's a good province, man. It is. Yeah, it really I is. Met a, I met a lot of strangers, obviously, through Jimmy. Um, and 
they, everybody was just, they were so, as soon as they heard it, that I was from out of town, it was like, oh, you know, let me buy you a beer. And I, at that point, I was like, I'm not drinking anymore. I'm good. I'm not drinking any. <laughs> Take your beer and shove it because I, uh, I'm done. I'd hit the wall at that point, and that you was it. Fuck so, yeah. So you were yeah. there Thursday. You went hard Thursday. Yeah. Right? Hard yeah. Friday, hard Saturday, and went hard Sunday morning, it sounds like, and then hit the yeah. wall. Like Sunday mid afternoon when you went to the cruise show. I got to right? give you credit, yeah. man. I wouldn't have been able to do three, four days with that group. There's no way. Yeah. There's it just was, no uh, fucking way. And not I, only I that, in I'm, terms of like surface area for a guy like Jimmy who's so small, I'm like, I mean, like, you know, he's, he, he, he can't, like, he, he keeps up with you with his drinks, right? Like, he fucking goes for it. Like, it, I'd, I'd worry about his liver at this point. I'd maybe want to get him checked. I'd maybe so want pick, to take him in for yeah, a quick little you what, I'll give him his I'll give you his cell phone number. You talk to him. Yeah. You give him a shout. See if you can get him to go to the doctor. <laughs> no, I'm good. I met yeah. uh well, we we picked him up after the we we went to that wrestling thing on the Friday, right? Yeah. And then we took him with us after that. And he was in our custody until I went home. And he should and Chris and I had been drinking all afternoon. Uh Dave didn't come to the show. We were drinking at the event. We get him in the Uber. We get back to Chris's place. And he says, well, I got to catch up to you guys now. And I watched that little man crush four beer in under 20 minutes. And just, and he, and he doesn't, he's drink. And he does, he makes a, he makes a scene. So you know that he's keeping up, crushes the can and it throws it. He's got strategically placed recycling, very, very st- steadfast when it comes to recycling at Christmas. Very, very neat house, by the way. I love that. Great, great place. Highly recommended if you're in Edmonton to kill yourself. It is oddly um, clean. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is weird. You'd think yeah, yeah. that, you know, raging alcoholic that drinks like that daily, <laughs> but in the house might be a bit of a problem, but it isn't actually. I woke up yeah. after the, 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 the party, like the barbecue day, the, the day that the boys were there for the show and they were there, they were doing a six hour show live from the garage and we moved the radio portion into the garage because it was so hot. It was too hot to sit outside. So we just cooked outside and brought the food back and forth. And by the time four or five o'clock rolled around, it was safe enough to go out there, but there was people tracking through, people leaving, you know, plates here, cups there, everything else. And I went to bed and I thought, wow, this is going to be a mess in the morning. I, like, obviously, I'm going to help clean. I woke up and I swear to God, it was like nothing happened. Molly like, how did you up? Yeah. Yeah. So, it, like, it, it was, it was, uh, yeah, people, it was a trip. The thing about it was the, the Army Chris is he's, he's always got a bunch of people. I mean, his whole existence is, you know, one social event to the next. Um, so he's, he deals with that quite often. And I think a lot of them are trained to just, you know, pick up and you'll, you'll go into the kitchen and somebody will be doing dishes like, yeah. you know, yeah, just it's a group effort there. Would, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a good group, man. It really is. It is. I, and, and you, um, you get that sense when you come here, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. It was, it was very, very, I wish very I would have been able to spend more time with you. I, I swear I to God. It. I know. I, I had I, the, don't have my talk. daughter from Toronto, I haven't seen in six, yep. seven months. She was in town. I so that was planned. <laughs> the last time, she, the last time she saw you, you were drunk with us then too. So it was. I yeah. get it. You can't do yeah, that yeah, every yeah. time. Yeah, that's right. The last <laughs> time when was when I went for her to graduation and didn't go to any of her yeah. things other than her graduation. And then you get yelled at for like three straight days when you got home. That's why. That's and then the she one. came home. Yeah, you would have been a huge asshole if you said, "Hey, listen." This is all great, but I'm going to spend three weekends in a fucking coma, just so you know. That's all I'm doing this weekend. Three guys. days this weekend. I love you, Go drink with my buddy from Ontario. I'm going to go drink with my boys. Yeah, that would have been yeah. an asshole move. One of the videos, this is you doing the show. I wanted to play this. This is actually really cool. Watch this. Okay, I would like to point out that you actually requested this, but we did have a bunch of one requests. Yeah, there was a lot of re- requests from Metallica. Yeah. Grant was like, we need to make sure that we get one from Metallica. And I was like, it's already covered there, my friend. We got so many Metallica requests that we decided to do Metallica once in an hour for the full volume takeover. We're live from Army Chris's place today, and we're still taking requests. We'll try to get the stuff in for you, 780 Look at that. That's fucking radio magic right there dude that was radio awesome. magic you fucking you hit the post and everything it was brilliant so good here's Did I hit a Sabbath. post there yeah oh yeah you nailed the post you killed it you fucking destroyed it it was incredible to watch so you got to be part of a radio show you got to get drunk all weekend and now, now you know what alberta's all about it's not Keep for up. the weak of heart 
right? No. It really isn't. These are fucking hardy people that go through like minus 40 for eight months of the year and still find a way to go out snowshoeing when they're wasted. So if you think they weren't going to drink in the summer, you're Good crazy. Point. Yeah. Good point. And that, yeah, you know what? And I did hear that from a few people about because how hot it was. And they're like, you know, it, it's unseasonable right now, but we're soaking up every minute we can because in a month from now, we're going to be in 10 feet of snow. And, and I was like, yeah, I get it, I guess. So, but holy shit, do they ever take advantage of that? It's, uh, it was good. It was good food. It was good people. It was a good time. It was worth the pain I'm going through now because I will not do this again uh, until next time. So, uh, <laughs> You'll do it again. Lachlan says that oh, all yeah. the time. And then he ends up feeding the birds in the backyard and wondering how he got to bed. Well, and and again, I, I can't, I don't even play in the same league with those guys. Like I'm not yeah. even in, like I'm not even in the minor leagues compared to that, that group. So I, like I said, every once in a while, I'll jump in the pool, I'll wait around, I'll splash around and then I get out. And I've always, yeah. you, you can, you can ask them. I've always got an out. I, I never it. like there's no there's no lock sleeping on the couch. There's there's none of that. I, I I'm a pin puller. Like I, I go. I go for a couple of hours and then I get out because it I don't have it. I and again, this isn't just me getting old and not being able to drink. I, I've been like that my whole life. I was like that in my twenties. I, I have an appreciation yeah, for guys drinking go self-awareness, <laughs> dude. Yeah, but I'm the same way. When I was when I drank, it was like I had this switch, and it was the second I got the spins, I'm like, I'm out. I gotta go. Not gonna yeah. even say goodbye to anybody. It's one of those things. And same thing with drinking two days in a row. As much as I drank, two days in a row was a lot of days in a row to get drunk in my world. Because yeah. there is that thing that happens when you're hungover where it's not even the hangover or the headache. It's the sadness that comes with your hangover. And after drinking four days, please tell me you were on the plane questioning whether or not you should pull open the emergency door. I had the emergency exit row too because yeah, it's got the did. leg room. So, um, no, I don't get that way because, like, I like I say, I way. no, I don't get sad. I just uh, there's there's regret uh, in the moment of I wouldn't have felt this bad if I would have just stopped returning to that cooler for the rest of the um, night last night. But again, like I say, I think it was, uh, it's something that as long as it's, I don't know how they do it, but I'm not doing it. I got, I found the groove though, like right out of the gate, which was fun. Like we went to the charity thing. Locke had that charity golf thing. And uh, I was there not 20 minutes and army Chris and I had already snagged a golf. We weren't even playing. We just somehow got a golf cart and I was out finding free beer for everybody from different <laughs> sponsors of holes came back with burgers and didn't pay for a thing so i was like i'm i i can do this this is okay and that was thursday then friday uh with the wrestling saturday with lock i even try i even tried i tried to get lock if you listen if you do catch the rear end of that show you'll hear a couple of slurs coming from uh old locker there was a good time. Uh, I was trying oh, was to see pickle to back to get him drunk. Was he faced at the end of the show? Yeah, yeah. I got, I got up. pretty lit up. I, well, we were on the pills because it was brought to you by Pilsner, and that was fun. Um, but the yeah. problem was, um, Dave was making some hooch in the back. I don't know what the hell it was, and it was actually really tasty. And I knew it was a, I knew it was just booze, just booze on booze on booze was something yeah. that made it palatable. Um, and, um, and they brought me a couple cups of that. And then I got a pickle juice, something pickle back rye pickle shooter back. from Lynn's anyway. And yeah, so a, a shooter and some of that, like, cause I am the guy that stays on one booze too. Right. Yeah. Like I, I really, I, I try so hard because that's when I get sick is if mm -hmm. I mix. So I had the pill there for a bit, but we also um, debunked yeah, beer can chicken that day. Which oh, was yeah. good. Beer can chicken's a joke, eh? You didn't realize it. Yeah. By the way, Army Chris just sent this to me. Him and Dave are still drinking today. They're back at it. <laughs> That's that right. Is that live right now? That's right now. Yeah, they're watching the show and they're they're still drinking back on it. And they called you both pussies, just so you yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Sometimes you gotta about, eat. Them. I'm okay. Sometimes you gotta know exactly what you are. Yeah. Exactly. That sounds about right. Uh, that is Ryan Lindley from the she Sheeple Shepherd podcast, as well as the Lens Report. Like uh, follow shit. the Lens Report. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's uh, the, that's the only reason why I didn't do a Lens Report yesterday. I was like, should I? No, I could have. do Alberta centric Lens Report, maybe. Yeah. The reason why the presenter sounds like a bag of shit. Bag of hammers because he spent yeah. the weekend in Alberta trying to keep up with Albertans at the bar. And then, that's and the other thing. A lot of guys that drink smoke, right? And if you're not yeah. used to it, your voice. I, I don't know. How I, I know you smoke. 
but St- I had to stop. I be- so I, I had my smokes. I brought smokes with me, and then I ran out. So Army Chris is like, yeah, no problem. Here, here, take a pack of these, and he smokes these fucking razor blade fucking res <laughs> rockets that I just absolutely. I, I had half a pack in my car because I couldn't do it. I'm like, I can't. I've had two cigarettes today. You notice yeah. I'm not drinking or smoking on this podcast. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah, yeah. I'm. Uh, I. It's been water. And, what was harder, trying to keep up with the smokes or keeping up with the drinks? I don't. Uh, I don't count the smokes. You know, uh, that's not really something that I I race with anybody with. But you do notice. You do see that where people once one person lights up and you're drunk and you forgot that you just literally with the other hand and putting one out and pulling another one and putting in it that happened a few times one one morning i was sitting with the the brush on my fingers going you look like a barton street person that lives in a storefront apartment that just smokes all day long i was looking to make sure it wasn't in my beard and what i was i was so i was a little self-conscious the next day so that gave me the hey maybe slow down on the darts not the voice or the chest pain. It was my fingers. I looked like shit, right? So <laughs> before I looked like a Gucci handbag, I should you get stop. the old yellow fingers, the old yellow beard, <laughs> the yellow so lips. Gross. Yeah, the yellow eyebrows. I love the old guys that have the white beard that smoke two packs a day, where it's like you can see all the smoke. There's like the eyebrows are yellow, yeah. the beard's yeah. yellow just around the mouth, but everything else is like jet white. The front of their hair is yellow. That was you. If you had hair, I mean, you would have been I- fucking yellow Santa. I'm in brushing my teeth in the morning and the color of the spit. <laughs> I'm like, that's indicative of way too many smokes. Um, and your mouth burns and you can't <laughs> breathe. You should probably reel it back a little bit yeah, this morning. Get off the smokes. Yeah. yeah so lessons learned. Um, Good. but, uh, yeah, I no, feel hung over just listening to you. Oh, dude, it's grossing yeah. me out talking to him about yeah. it. It's yeah. literally yeah. taking feel, me back can... to that time where you wake up and it's, it's like someone took a shit in your mouth and you're hung over and you're like, That's exactly oh, it. you're wheezing. That's dehydration. <laughs> yeah. The, the, yeah. I, I was listening uh, I was listening to Jeff when he was on earlier and thinking about the pee. I'm like, if, a, if I peed on a girl with the um, color of the urine that I have today, they'd phone 911. They'd be like, something's something's yeah. definitely broken in this Why man. Why is it brown? Needs- yeah. <laughs> Why does my pee chunky. smell like mushrooms? <laughs> my so, pee smells like, like a mushroom farm. It looks like gravy. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a lot of it been hurts. a lot of Gatorade and water yeah. today. So why am I peeing porridge? It fucking hurts coming out. <laughs> drank all weekend. Uh, that is Ryan Lindley again. Lynn's report. I'm glad you're back. Uh, follow him at Ryan Lindley on Twitter is where you can get him. Uh, that is Lachlan Cross. Way to go. Way to kill Ryan uh, at Lachlan Cross on Twitter is where you can find him as well. Uh, and uh, the the host of uh, 957 Cruise FM at Edmonton's morning show. It's called The Locker Room. Great morning show out of Edmonton. If you're looking for a radio show to stream, because the rest of them around here are total shit, uh, go to 957cruisefm.ca. Yeah, you do. You do a great job. Um, thanks for doing this. Thank you, really my friend. appreciate it. Great to see you. Yeah, yeah, as always. We'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for sending um, Ryan back uh, in one Is piece. there anything to plug for tomorrow? Tom Marazzo. Tom, that, that's yeah. not Thursday? That's t- that's No, it's tomorrow. That's going to be interesting. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I Tom like Marazzo, one of the organizers of the uh, convoy. I like this. The um, new dean. The new dean. We've connected. Uh, and Tom's going to join us tomorrow right around 3 o'clock. We're going to take your phone calls. We're going to take your tweets. Well, not phone calls. We're going to take your tweets. We're going to take your comments. You can comment in the comment section. Uh, all you have to do is you want to follow along is uh, follow us at uh, YouTube, Dean Blundell Show on YouTube, or Twitch, Dean Blundell TV. Yeah, you're in for that tomorrow. Uh, you've got a lot of questions, so uh, come prepared for that. Really great to see you, Locke. Thanks so much for doing this, brother. Have a good night, brother. You too. Take care. Lachlan Cross, 957 Cruise FM at Edmonton. Uh, follow him at Lachlan Cross on Twitter. But yeah, tomorrow uh, we're going to talk to Tom Marazzo. And a lot of people are pissed, actually. A lot of people were angry when I said, hey, tomorrow we're going to talk to Tom Marazzo. That was yesterday. Sorry, Wednesday we're going to talk to Tom. A former military veteran, uh, one of the organizers of the convoy, one of the spokespeople, really. Um, and uh, we took shots at each other, as I have for several months now people that had a difference of opinion than me and um we decided that uh, we're gonna do a show and we're gonna talk and just listen try and figure out how he got there what he believes why he believes what he believes 
And I'll share those things too. Now, listen, if you're one of those people that sent me an email and say, why are you putting that traitorous guy on? Listen, these are your words, right? I don't know anything about Tom other than the fact that he's the face of this thing or one of them. And I'm excited to talk to him because I have questions. We all have questions. And instead of sitting there fucking swearing at people, maybe talk to him. Explain this to me. Super simple, isn't it? When you think about it. Explain to me how you feel. Explain to me how you got here. <clears throat> I'll tell you how I got here. You tell me how you got here. Um, and in those questions and answers, we'll talk about how we both think and what we both feel. Um, I discount every single human being who says this exercise is uh, not for them or they're not going to watch because they simply don't like him or don't like me or disagree with me or disagree with him. That's craziness. It's craziness. If you disagree with something, you got to figure out what it is. And if you've got people in your life that you don't like, you're doing things that you think are wrong because other things, then you fucking talk about it. So we're going to talk to Tom tomorrow and I'm looking forward to it. And I would ask everybody, and your lovely people love you all. Everybody that contributes thousands of comments that we get, uh, the people that, 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 that join us for these shows that you try to treat him, whether you want to or not with a little respect tomorrow, I'm going to shouldn't be that difficult for me to treat a human being with respect that I wholeheartedly disagree with. So when you log in tomorrow and you want to ask a question, ask a respectful question. Um, if you're on the other side of the equation, if you think he's a hero and you think that the convoy was awesome and you think that torturing Canadians with horns for three weeks was cool, ask a question, be respectful and we'll get to the bottom of something. At least we'll have a conversation instead of making fucking Twitter hilarious every day or a little more poisonous every day. It's kind of the deal, right? You live in a silo, you don't really learn anything. Whether you agree or not, you can still learn, right? Like, I watch a lot of history shows. I watch this documentary on the Einsatzgruppen, the SS from Germany, the other day. Obviously, I hate Nazis. Obviously, I fucking can't stand the Third Reich. Obviously, I think Hitler was the fucking devil. But I wanted to know how it worked. I want to know why. I wanted to know about the suffering and the pain and the th people of Ukraine and how they went through Bobby Yar and all the other places and how the people like I wanted to know. So I learned by watching a documentary and then I started reading about it. And then, you know what that did? Crazy enough. What that did is it helped me understand why people call the Ukraine a Nazi state um, and helped me understand why people can't stand Christian Freeland's grandfather. It all works. So if you talk to people, if you educate yourself and you expose your things, yourself to things that you otherwise wouldn't expose yourself to them because you're just a stick in the ass or you're a fucking loser who doesn't want to be educated to learn. This is not the podcast for you, I guess. Anywho, join us tomorrow. Tom Marazzo will be our guest right at three o'clock. And we'll go till three or five, I'd say four or five. You can draw your own conclusions and opinions. Um, I've drawn mine. Now I want to know more. How does one get to this point? What went into this? How do you feel about yourself today? How do you feel about life? How do you feel about where you're at? Things that happened. Maybe you want to distance yourself from some of them. Maybe you just want to have a conversation and let people know what you think. Because... We didn't find out through the honking of the horns. Things were too loud. Anyway, thank you. Appreciate it. Tomorrow, Tom Arazzo, 3 o'clock. Join us in. Uh, appreciate you being here as always. Thanks to our friends at uh, Kivla.ca, powered by Kivla.ca, looking for a good defense attorney. Looking for someone to get you out of legal jail? Did you do something you shouldn't have? Did you Have you been accused of doing something you didn't do? Uh, and you need the best defense attorneys in Southern Ontario, Robert at Kivlaw.ca. That's his email address, personal email address, Robert at Kivlaw.ca. Send him a note today. Ask him a question. He'll respond to you immediately. 
And then you can figure out whether or not you want the best defense attorneys in this entire province to represent you to go through something that people shouldn't go through alone. Keep your freedom. Keep your options open. Kivlaw.ca defense attorneys will help you do all that and much more. They know that this is a pain in the ass. They know sometimes you get caught up. They know sometimes you get accused of doing something you didn't do. Uh, So make sure you give my friend Robert at Kivlaw.ca a quick email, quick little, how you doing? Help me out here. I'm in trouble because this is who I trust and you should trust him too. He's a great friend of mine, great human being. Robert at Kivlaw.ca. Again, uh, Kivlaw Defense Attorneys. We are powered by Kivlaw.ca. Uh, thanks to Ed at Ed's Fine Imports and his Gitch. We wear them, so should you. G-I-T-C-H-3 is your promo code. Check him out today. Order online. He'll send you a free pair when you buy three or more pairs of underwear. G-I-T-C-H-3 is your promo code. These are luxury boxer briefs, people. They're not your regular everyday. They come in a package that comes inside a package. So your package goes in a package that comes inside a package. They're neatly folded when you get them as well. They're really cool. And you, there's a little pouch. All your stuff goes in there. Breathable airs. There's no smell. It's incredible. Try them today. Gitch 3. They'll be the last underwear you buy. I can guarantee it. G-I-T-C-H 3. That is your promo code. He'll send you a free pair when you order three or more. He's also got a massive online store of clothing for men and boys at edsfindimports.com. So check him out today. And of course, our friends at Easy Auto Financial, easyautofinancial.ca. Uh, these are good people that help you get uh, financing for cars. And not many people can. Maybe your credit rating's been uh, damaged or bruised. Sometimes they call it bruised credit. It's just a nice way of saying credit shit. These guys don't care. They're professionals. They're really good at what they do. Totally discreet. And they're absolutely turnkey. If, so if you need some help, if you need to get a car, If you need to get financing and don't want to pay for it, free financing, and you want someone to do all the legwork, easyautofinancial.ca. Check them out today. You'll be glad you did. That's it for us. Tom Marazzo tomorrow. Have a great day, everybody. We will see you at 3 o'clock. I'd say bright and early, but it's like midday. So it's see you in the mid-afternoon, friends. (laughs) Bye-bye.